I'm going to spend time today looking at the intersection of technology, policy, and finance when it comes to clean energy. If we're going to make progress on clean energy, if we're going to achieve greater sustainability, whether it's here in Scotland or other countries or globally, we've got to work at all three corners of that triangle. We've got to advance the technologies, we've got to put the right policies in place, and there's got to be adequate capital to make all this happen. So I'm going to try to weave together those three very important points if, uh, around sustainability. I've been very impressed since I arrived in Scotland at, at the real opportunities this country has in clean energy, and I think uh, the area of offshore wind, both the fixed turbines, the turbines that sit on the bottom, and the, and the floating turbines in particular. It seems as though this country is moving out very smartly in that direction. Also, wave and tidal energy, uh, some very smart work being done on those advanced technologies, and I think they're very promising, not only for Scotland, not only for the UK, but, but globally. And then the other area, I was quite taken by uh, the very great focus here on, on energy efficiency, how to improve district heating, how to uh, do a whole host of things to cut energy use. And if you do both those things, if you cut energy use in the first place and you put these renewable energy sources in place, this country will be a lot further ahead and, and big business will result. So we also have some real experts here this morning in the shape of the Scottish Enterprise Sustainability Team who will be on hand later to help you and, uh, and give advice. And we're extremely pleased to welcome to Glasgow today Dan Reicher, our guest speaker today. Uh, who has spent much of his three-decade career in and around renewable energy policy and low-carbon economics. Uh, Dan has been an advisor to three US presidents, an executive at Google, and is now executive director of the Steyer Taylor Center for Energy Policy and Finance at Stanford University in sunny California. Uh, the Herald uh, actually ran an interview with Dan a couple of weeks ago, and in the article he highlighted uh, the opportunities for Scottish businesses in the emerging uh, low-carbon markets. For instance, global annual sales in the low-carbon environmental goods and services uh, market are now running at more than, I think it's three trillion pounds a year. And in the UK alone, the market's now worth, an, uh, worth more than 13 billion pounds a year. Couple this with the ambitious target set by the Scottish Government, such as reducing total carbon emissions uh, by 80% in the next 35 years. You don't have to be a business genius to work out uh, and realise the commercial possibilities that exist, um, particularly in a country such as Scotland with a rich industrial heritage that is blessed with superb natural and renewable resources. So it's clear these changes will affect every individual and every business, whether we like it or not. And in Scotland, it's vital we understand the value of this growing domestic and global demand. For Scottish Enterprise, this is absolutely an agenda of opportunities. Um, it's great that the Scottish Government have um, strong climate change policies. Our particular interest as an economic development organisation is on opportunities. And I've just put the finishing touches to um, our current business plan. And two out of five of our five business plan opportunities are around low carbon and renewables. So you know, we see this as a major area of opportunity um, for Scotland. This is an area of growing international opportunity. There are markets, huge markets, growing in China, in India, in South America, in Africa. So do we stand back and let other countries get into this race? Or you know, do we try and get uh, into these markets? And we have some fantastic capabilities in Scotland. You know, we have companies uh, involved at cutting edge of water management. We've got companies doing really clever things in the area of sustainable cooling systems. We've got great uh, construction companies. We have some great niche capabilities in Scotland. The trick is, how can we in Scottish Enterprise, working with our partners in universities, uh, business, local authorities, uh, intermediaries, how can we get these companies, how can we grow them? How can we, how can we get them to innovate? And how can we get them into these low carbon markets? Because as I said earlier, if we don't, then someone else will. Um, but we believe that there's a real opportunity um, in this area. I think knowledge for growth is really a, a very good phrase. And that's part of what I want to try to do today. Talk about, impart some knowledge, because I think in, in imparting some of that knowledge, some of the experiences we've had in, in the US, a little bit about our work in China, um, I might help in this important quest that all of you have, all of we have, um, to, to
to achieve growth in the, in the clean energy area. So this market is big, and this is something that I think Scotland, with your major push right now in, in low carbon energy, could have a very serious piece of going forward. This is the way that I like to think about this whole area. Um, if we are going to achieve a more sustainable energy future, we've got to work at all three points of this clean energy triangle, technology, policy, and finance. We've got to have a lot of expertise at each point of that triangle, a lot of people who know what they're doing. We also have to do a good job of working across these different points of the triangle. Too often we have technologists who feel as though I just invent the next widget and it ought to just happen. Not understanding that in the world of energy, you've got to grapple with the policy world. You've got to have adequate capital to move something forward. And speaking of scale, the scale is massive, as you know. This is an area, onshore turbines, where we have, in fact, moved through this technology pipeline. We're there. We're deploying at scale here in Scotland, all over the world. And the proof is in the numbers. The costs have dropped dramatically. And the deployment has been equally dramatic. 250,000 megawatts, 250 large nuclear power plants worth of capacity. That's real deployment, and it, and it grows quickly here and all over the world. I was really struck yesterday at the meetings in, in Edinburgh. The real, the real focus here on energy efficiency, uh, district heating systems, a whole host of things where I think, I think you understand well the opportunities. And I like to say, not only is energy efficiency give us low-hanging fruit, but low-hanging fruit that grows back, because we're always inventing new energy efficiency technology. So in a sense, we don't really use up the opportunity. And that's what makes it so attractive. When you have a well-established policy structure, when it's reliable, good things can happen. And when it's not, you get what we have here. We have a tax incentive for wind energy. It's called the PTC, or the Production Tax Credit. When it's on the books, we see good, stable growth. When it expires, as it regularly does, unfortunately, we see a crash in our wind development. Let's now look at finance. Uh, the technologies are being developed. Not all of them are there. Um, policy is, is, is doing what it can. Not always everything we need, but, but some things go on the books at the federal and state level. Question then is, how do you have adequate capital? How do you have low cost capital? Not just enough capital, but capital doesn't cost too much um, and, in, and in large quantities. And finally, when it comes to commercialization, the biggest actor on the planet has been China. Across a whole range of energy technologies, <laughs> the Chinese are stepping up in a very significant way and saying, we want to own the biggest share of that $38 trillion energy opportunity that I talked about at the beginning. So from solar to wind to nuclear, very extensive program in carbon capture and storage, the Chinese are moving ahead in a variety of areas. I think there's certainly going to be opportunities for collaboration with the Chinese, and we are exploring those. Our government is exploring those. We have a project at Stanford exploring those. But I think there's also opportunities for some real competition as well. And trying to find the right balance across a range of technologies is, is the key. So technology, policy, finance taking you around this triangle, hopefully giving you some perspective. I guess I'll end by saying I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the opportunities here. I think you've got a smart approach to all three points of that triangle. I think you're making some real progress in an array of technologies. I think you're taking the best from other places, learning from other places and how they do it. Yes, indeed, you have a small domestic market, but you're very well located with respect to the EU, with respect to North America, and certainly with respect to Asia. So 
uh, I would say keep at it. Um, this is a $38 trillion opportunity to both do well and do good. And uh, as we say, more, more power to you. Please, put your hands together for Dan Wright. Thank you. It was very interesting to get an international sort of point of view on it and Dan being an expert in his field uh, in the US with so much experience in government, it was interesting to see how he's worked with different political parties out there to get things achieved um, and get that international perspective because certainly I'm based in the Edinburgh Centre for Carbon Innovation which is a very exciting place to be with sort of business and policy makers and students coming together there. But um, seeing how, what they're doing in the US is, is good. And someone who's been in it for such a long time compared with many people, you know, he's been doing renewables for 20 years now. So yeah, I thought it was very exciting to get that. I think there's kind of a common theme here is that there's lots of potential in what we can be doing to lower our carbon footprint um, individually and as businesses and as a country. There's lots of opportunity for Scotland. I think that and because we have lots of experience and relevant experience in this area, I think where the frustration is is at the speed at which we're addressing those opportunities. I think the main thing is how uh, finance and policy and technology um, work together uh, and can make a, a difference to um, how business addresses the, the challenge of, of climate change.